Hello, and welcome to another unboxing video sponsored by Connectus. My name is Brian East, and today we will be looking at the Cradle Point R1900 ruggedized router. And this device is part of Cradle Point's series of mobile routers, along with the IBR900 and the IBR1700. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video. I have a little challenge for you. It should be fun. Now, this particular device comes with 5G embedded while also supporting Cat20 4G LTE. It also comes with four gigabit ethernet ports. But the cool thing is, is it can be mounted to the Cradle Point RX30 series managed accessory. And this will add four gigabit ethernet ports and you can choose between having them be a PoE or regular ports, but then it also has a modular modem slot for additional cellular diversity. Now the R1900 also comes with NetCloud service for mobile, which provides streamlined configuration and continuous cloud, modem, and router software feature enhancements. In this, you have secure and remote management, dynamic routing protocols, traffic steering and QoS, zone-based firewall and VPN, out-of-band management, real-time troubleshooting and diagnostics tools, insights, alerts, dashboard analytics, predictive alerting, location services and extensibility, plus many, many more. The key features include an RS-232 connector for legacy devices and serial connections, and a standard GPIO port for sensors, display, diodes, etc. It also has a 5G embedded modem, as I mentioned before. It includes Wi-Fi 6 and a 940 megabit firewall and Bluetooth connector for IoT devices. As with other Cradle Point devices, this unit sports zero-touch deployment and day-one connectivity. At Connectus, we often configure these sorts of devices for you prior to shipping, allowing for a true plug-and-play deployment. And this device is also designed specifically for vehicle use. So first responders are a natural fit, like law enforcement, fire, and EMS. Delivery services and service fleets can also use this as well. With its rugged design, powerful connectivity, and compact footprint, the Cradle Point R1900 is perfect for your mobile routing needs. All right, let's jump in. The first thing you're gonna see at the top is a little insert that's instructing you to go to your app store and download the Cradle Point Verify app if you haven't already. And this will help you set your device up into NetCloud Manager. That's where all of your configuration is really going to happen. The next is a sheet with tiny script that is going to tell you all the legal jargon and technical specs. We won't go over that. Lucky you. And underneath here is your mounting template. You'll see six holes along here. There's most likely you're going to use these holes on the on the ends. However, depending on the surface that you're mounting it to, you might use these holes right here, and this will help you line it up for the device. We'll go over a little bit of the mounting options uh, when we actually jump into our device here. And here is the R1900. They did a little neat thing here where they put the, the, the logo for the cradle point on the heat sink this time. That's pretty neat. Now, if you look at the back of the device, we've got your SIM gate, and two little Phillips head screw holes. When you unscrew this, the, the screws are gonna stay on the SIM gate, so you're less likely to lose them. So you'll remove the SIM gate, and then if you're only gonna use one SIM, I recommend you put it into slot one. Reason being is if you do decide to use a second SIM at some point in the future, you know, for cellular diversity or just added bandwidth, it'll require less configuration. You can put your secondary SIM in slot two. Also keep in mind that there is a little magnetic sensor underneath the gate and the device will not power on unless you've got the gate put in and screwed in. Now on the side here, you've got eight antenna connectors. The first four are your cellular connectors, your main, your div, your MIMOs one and two. Then you've got a GPS and a Bluetooth on the way end for IoT devices and your two Wi-Fi. They're both uh, 2.45 gigahertz. Now you could use paddle antennae for the, for the cellular connectors. However, being a vehicle, primary, primarily a vehicle device, these are gonna be designed specifically to use external antennae. Reason being is this device will go inside of a trunk most likely, 
and inside of a big metal box, you're not going to get that strong of a signal. So in the case of uh, first responders, police vehicles, there's usually going to be uh, an antenna mounted on top of the roof or possibly on the uh, top of the trunk. Turning over here, we've got four gigabit Ethernet LAN ports. Now they're labeled WAN, LAN 1, 2, and 3. They're really interchangeable. You can configure each one to do however you want. And then if you want to manually configure your device, you've got a USB port right here. You've got your RS-232 for serial connections or legacy devices, your little reset button here, your power connector, and a multi-purpose GPIO for sensors, displays, things of that nature. Now on the underside, here are the four screw holes that pertain to the corner screw holes on your template, but then there's also this screw hole here. And depending on the surface of your uh, where you're going to mount the device, you might decide to use these center ones. Most of the time people will use these these four right here. And inside of, of the box you've also got your small accessories kit. And these are going to be your four uh, M4 screws, some nuts, and washers. Now of interest is this little piece right here. This will open up and underneath is an adapter. It's a connector for the RX-30. Now that's a mount. So if you wanted to have additional ethernet ports, this, this, this mount will add four additional ethernet ports. You can choose between either having them be PoE or you can throw an additional modular modem in there for added diversity. And here is our power adapter. Now on this end, you've got your, your four pin connector that goes into the box. And then on this end, you've got your four wires. You've got your positive and negative. You've got your ground and your ignition sense. Now with the positive and negative, you can run it directly to the battery, the 12 volt. More likely in a fleet environment, particularly with law enforcement, you're gonna have a, a fuse box that'll go into. Uh, and the reason being is that law enforcement vehicles often will have multiple electronic devices that are gonna be pulling off that 12 volt. You've got your light system, your sirens, you've got your, you know, your wheeling, your, uh, your radio systems, an in-car video system like the, uh, the Motorola M500 or the Axon Fleet 3. And, and the newer Ford Explorer uh, Interceptor series, they will often have a, a second battery terminal directly in the back of the, the vehicle, in the trunk. And the reason being is that a lot of times they'll put these, these electronics trays into the back of the vehicle and so it's just closer easier access and now for a little fun here we see that white's in a pretty precarious situation the solution is going to be checkmate and three moves for black and it's black's turn to move don't forget sometimes you need to sacrifice this is brian east with another connector sponsored unboxing video thank you for watching and don't forget to follow us on linkedin by scanning the qr code on the following slide I'll see you next time.